Nick Gottenbacher here, uh, Michigan Realtor. Today I want to talk about a uh, common occurrence previously in past years and we might see it a little bit um, in today's market and that is highest and best and more specifically for the buyers winning multiple offer situations. So what is multiple offer situations? It's when a home seller puts their house on the market and they receive more than one offer on their house. You know, it could be two, could be three, could be nine, 10, could be 20, 25. Um, it could be as many offers as they get. But basically, once the seller receives more than one offer, they're not only gonna go to the people that submitted an offer, but everybody that showed the house and say, hey, we're putting a deadline, all offers have to be submitted by this time, and then we're gonna pick basically the highest bidder. Um, so in a, with a buyer, it puts you in a tough situation because you know you're bidding against multiple people, but you also don't want to overpay for the house. So I wanna go over the correct um, time frame that you should do with submitting your offer, as well as some strategies that's gonna help you as the buyer actually win this multiple offer situation. So first off, when you are submitting an offer, um, you wanna have your agent check the comps for you. You wanna see exactly what similar homes in the neighborhood are selling for and what's market um, price on the home. You know, most buyers are getting a loan on the house. So you don't wanna pay, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 over then after you pay that inspection cost and then after you wait two weeks, three weeks for that appraisal to come back, you know, find out that you actually paid twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 over the appraised value and ultimately you can't get a loan on the property and purchase the property. And then also you wanna have your agent call the other agent or the seller and find out specifically what they're looking for in an offer. You know, not all the time they need the highest price. You know, maybe they need to be moved out as quickly as possible. Um, and that's something where you can talk to your lender. You know, how quickly can we close? Can we um, put a rush on this closing? And that's gonna help the seller choose your offer. So let's talk about the top terms that you wanna potentially put in your offer that's gonna have a seller pick your offer as a buyer. So the first one I like to put in there is appraisal deficiency. Um, basically what this says is you are willing as a buyer to pay X amount over the appraised value. So say you put a thousand dollar appraisal deficiency on the, on the purchase and the house comes in at 220. Basically what you're saying is you're willing to pay 220 on your loan amount, but then bring an extra thousand dollar cash to the table to make up that difference. Um, this is going to happen a lot because most of the time, the top properties that are getting multiple offers are those homes with you know the mo best upgrades that look the nicest, and maybe they were priced just a little bit under market value. Um, basically, what this is going to do is help the buyer you know choose your offer because in a situation that an appraisal comes in low they're getting an extra thousand dollars or whatever amount that you put their cash in their pocket. Um, second one is paid occupancy. Um, say the seller you know, needs 30, 60 days to actually purchase their new home or get moved into their new home after they do sell their house. Um, what this is gonna allow them to do is stay in the house rent free for 30 to 60 days. Um, and this is, you know, a very minor thing. You know, you pay their or you're paying your mortgage without living there, you know, maybe a month or two. But in the seller's mind, sometimes this is something that they really do like and where you might be only paying an extra fifteen hundred dollars for those 30 days. Um, in the seller's mind, it really might feel like a lot more money because it just isn't a mortgage check there that they're gonna have to pay out. Um, and then another one, and the final one is the escalation clause. Obviously, one thing that you do want to avoid is overpaying for the property. So basically what the escalation clause is, is saying you will actually jump the top by other buyer's price by X amount up to a certain amount. So for example, say the house is listed at 200,000, you put an offer at 200,000, but then also you put an escalation clause saying that you would pay up to 210,000 and you would jump the top offer by 1,000. So in this situation, um, let's say another buyer comes in and puts in an offer at 205,000. Basically, what you would do is your offer would automatically go up to 206,000, and you would jump the best offer by 1,000 
until it got to that 210,000 uh, mark where you would be capped out. And this is a way um, where you are actually not overpaying for the house and you're actually beating the best bidder. Um, and this is something that works only about 50% of the time. Um, a lot of brokers see that as a frowned upon practice, but you can certainly ask their agent and see if that's something that they and the seller would be willing to look at. And then uh, one more bonus um, that actually works quite a bit is you research the seller. You know, you with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. Um, maybe you have a common occurrence with these people. You know, maybe you go to the same church. Maybe you work at the same place. Um, and actually putting that in a cover letter with your offer. Um, I just had a situation where we were competing with five other offers. Um, and it was, you know, looking very tough. You know, my buyer had an FHA loan, so it's not the best financing either. But um, when we got into the situation, they really liked the house. Um, and we researched the seller. And ironically enough, they went to the same church. So what we did is we matched any offer with an escalation clause. And then we put, um, you know, that cover letter saying basically they went to the same church. And that seller ended up picking our offer. And that ended up, you know, winning the sale for them. So those are just a few, you know, tips and tricks that you can use as a potential buyer if you're competing against multiple offer scenarios. Um, if you want to have a conversation or you're looking to buy or sell real estate in Michigan, certainly give me a call. But I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.